Today, we're going to talk about the difference between a $600 Moto Bikane I bought from Bikes Direct gravel bike made of aluminum and a carbon fiber bicycle from Argon 18, the dark matter I bought three years ago for about $4,000, $4,500. Now, I know this is not a fair comparison, so what I'm actually doing here is giving you some insight into what Grava Corporation is actually going to try to do with bicycles. But before we do anything with bicycles, we have to understand our market, our price points, and our quality a bit better. So we're going to do a bicycle review as a product manager. So stay tuned because you're going to learn some things from this uh, video that maybe you've never heard before as a person who used to work inside the industry. Okay, so before I get into the comparison, um, let me tell you about myself. So I've been a cyclist or been on a bicycle for 43 years. Since I was six years old, I'm 49 now. And I've done everything from triathlons to running races to uh, road cycling races. I've raced cyclocross, all amateur. I'm not any good as a racer, so let me don't. I'm not trying to pretend to be a bike racer by any means. I'm very mediocre when it comes to uh, those sort of endurance events. I've done long distance cycling races, uh, road races. Like I said, I was registered as a road racer, as a cyclocross racer. And I've done some bike packing races and I've done bike touring and I've used just a myriad of bicycles. So I have a lifetime of experience in the technology realm and a lifetime of experience in cycling. I've watched carbon fiber come up from its uh, from its beginnings. Like I remember in 1998, 99, when they first started using carbon fiber and all those interesting things. But I also have another perspective, which is very unique. Uh, when I left uh, when I left the military after 20 years, I joined a company called the Sufferfest. So initially, I was just the head of customer support, but eventually became the COO, the Chief Operations Officer for the Sufferfest. And what the Sufferfest was is an indoor software training platform, and we took videos of professional bike races uh, like the Tour de France, uh, Giro d'Italia. Uh, all these different bicycle races and put them in a storyline and allowed you to train indoors to something that was a bit more interesting than just staring at a blank ceiling in your or a blank wall in your basement. Uh, from that, we were bought, Sufferfest was bought by Wahoo Fitness and I became one of the senior product managers at Wahoo Fitness, mostly to help the Sufferfest application become what is the system application today. And also, I was the product manager for cloud just for a short period of time. But I did get to work with the other product managers across the Wahoo Fitness product line. And um, I got really, in those six years of working within the cycling industry, I got a lot of experience and gained a lot of knowledge about what it takes to run an effective business, uh, what it takes to do a lot of these things that people don't see. So when we're looking at the differences between something like a $600 aluminum bicycle, gravel bicycle, and a $4,000 to $4,500 carbon fiber bicycle like the Argon 18, well, obviously, that's not a good comparison, right? You wouldn't want to say Motobicane versus Argon 18. Which one should you buy? That's not what we're doing here. What we're really doing here is we're doing a product comparison. Uh, as a product manager. So you're going to get a little bit of a view into at least how I do my work or did my work as a product manager when looking at creating a new product line. Maybe that's better for this video is like, uh, you know, how would you do this as a product manager? Now, Grava Adventure Corporation sells bicycle packs handmade in Colombia and clothing made from the Americas, mostly, with the exception of a few shirts. Uh, it's very difficult not to do things in Asia. 95% of all bicycles and everything you buy is made in like Taiwan, Vietnam, India, or China in America. So one of the things I noticed is when I was in Colombia for work or visiting that it's so interesting to see because you have these Grand Tour champions 
uh, in Bogota, Colombia, Egan Bernal, Nairo Quintana, you know, a lot of really famous cyclists. But people in uh, Colombia or in South America are riding like Specialized and Giant and Trek, which are American brand name bicycles uh, that are manufactured in Asia and then sold and ridden in Colombia. And I was like, wow, this is really kind of unique that we don't have an American brand, a really big American brand where we're, we're not really manufacturing in America. So my idea is basically I want to try to create American brand bicycle uh, and I want to do it in a way that's uh, feasible because thinking about going against any large company is just impossible, right? And so in my product management journey, of looking at these two different bicycles, which is the Moto Bacane versus the Argon 18. We're looking at two bicycles that are made in Asia, Taiwan and China, and uh, one's aluminum, one's carbon fiber. So first off, we're gonna just do a general review of these two bikes and see what the difference is, which is gonna be quite significant. So the Moto Bacane aluminum bicycle. Now the Moto Bacane frame is really good. Uh, I mean, they did a good job welding it. Uh, the aluminum welds are great. Uh, they're, n they're not going to fail. There's no cracking. Like, it's really solid work out of Taiwan. Uh, the aluminum frame is well painted. It's a flat matte black. Um, they got their decal badges on the front and good lettering work along the bottom tube of the bicycle. So the frame overall, I have a lot of confidence in the frame standing up over time and working well. Now, because the bicycle is cheaper, uh, you know, $600, which I believe Moto Bacane is just moving inventory. They're taking a loss. I mean, not, not Moto Bacane, but Bikes Direct is taking a loss on these bikes. There's, I don't see how they're selling these and making any sort of money at $600 because it's not just the frame you have to have. You have the components. Um, so before I get to the components, but the frame is very versatile. So you'll have the three bolts on the fork, uh, which gives you mounting options. You have bolts on the top, which gives you mounting options, your standard water bottle, uh, bolts on the interior of the interior triangle. And then you have bolts on the bottom where you can still bolt another thing. And then you have additional bolts on the back where we can put our pannier rack on. So a lot of potential, this frame gives us a lot of potential to do a lot of things like gravel riding, uh, bike touring, uh, bike commuting. Um, that's why I purchased it because of all the options you get on this aluminum frame. Now, going to the other parts like the wheels and the actual components is really what makes a difference in the price point. Because when we're looking at metal frames and construction of metal frames, you know, price points are gonna be very similar no matter where you go, with the exception of if you're doing 10,000, 20,000 frames, you're going to get that price point is going to be a lot lower uh, than if you're doing maybe 500 frames or 1,000 frames just because of volume. Uh, you're going to get a price break on volume. But the components really kind of make the difference here. So we're using on the Moda Bacane, we're using Shimano Claris. And Shimano Claris is a really, really low grade, uh, you know, bicycle component set. Uh, we have a two by, so two by eight. So it's two gears in the front, eight gears in the back. And uh, the gears are not really geared that high. Uh, so if we're climbing with a lot of weight on this bicycle, it probably wouldn't be the best bike for it uh, because that gearing you need to climb is not really as high as I would want it to be. And then the wheels are really just standard aluminum wheels. Uh, with uh, really standard road touring tires on them. So the problem, I guess the only problem I have from a customer's perspective, or at least thinking about the Moto Bacane CX, aluminum CX bicycle, is that it really just violates rule number one, calling itself a gravel bike. And rule number one uh, for a gravel bike is that anything could be a gravel bike with the right tires. <laughs> so we kind of miss the point the primary point from a product perspective is that we don't have the right tires on this bicycle. So with the right gravel tires, this would I would consider to be a gravel bike. But the components are really too low grade for me to take this on sort of any long distance adventure. And I 
bring that up because I had my Shimano Claris shifters fail on me. And um, if you're way out in the boonies and your shifters fail on you, that's not a great place to be, especially if you have to walk out or hike out of your area and you can't ride your bicycle. Or if you're on a bike tour and maybe you're a bike tour in another country, really problematic. And that is really where the difference is on price points for most bicycles. Most bicycles that you buy that are a higher price point, that extra money that you're spending is not necessarily going into the frame. It is going into those components. So think about it this way. When we're looking at lower priced or cheaper components, what we're really talking about is the build quality of the components. Now, the engineering's fine. I really don't see really any engineering differences if you took a Shimano Claris system versus a Shimano 105 system. Uh, they're going to be maybe set up very similar, uh, but we're using lower grade components and lower grade parts. And because we're mass manufacturing these components and parts, what you're sacrificing is the quality control, really. So the likelihood for a lower price component to fail on you is a lot higher than a higher price component because the higher price components will have a higher quality control investment in the manufacturing process. Everything about a higher price component will have just a higher quality control, uh, better engineering, uh, better testing and things like that because they can invest that time because they're going to the margin is going to be a lot higher on those higher quality components. So if we took a SRAM RED system, they probably are sitting at like a 70% margin, gross margin, or a 60% gross margin. Uh, but if we look at a Shimano Claris system, because it has a lower price point and you got to do volume, their gross margins are probably really, really small, like 20% gross margin, I bet, on the lower quality stuff. And that goes for everything. Like the lower the price the bicycle is, the lower the gross margin is, the lower amount of money you can make. So you have to sell more and more and more of those. Now with the, now let's go over to the Argon 18. Super, I love this bicycle. It, it's done fantastic things for me. It's never failed. And I've taken it on bike packing trips in the USA and I've taken it on bike packing trips in Europe. Uh, through the Bavarian forest in Germany, through the Czech Republic, through Austria, up through the Alps. I've been in many, many places along the Danube with this uh, bicycle. The only thing that like the Argon 18 is missing is it's really just a true gravel bike. I would never use it for touring where I put panniers on the back. Even though I've tried, I just don't trust the carbon fiber forks and putting a lot of, uh, not forks, but the carbon fiber triangle on the back. I don't trust putting a lot of weight on that thing because it could break. And that's the bad thing about carbon fiber, even though it's lightweight and it's extremely durable, it will break before a metal frame breaks. And I have seen that happen before. Uh, so unless you get into thermoplastic carbon fiber, which has a 10 times strength increase in the carbon fiber uh, structure itself, uh, really standard carbon fiber is just never gonna be as strong as your metal frames. Now, with the, uh, I use a 1x12 system on this uh, Argon 18. Uh, it's a Shimano, I mean, SRAM uh, Force Apex system, and it's a mullet setup. So if anybody doesn't know what a mullet is, is I take a, you take a mountain bike rear end, so you go up to 52, 53 gears on the back, and the mountain bike rear derailleur, which works seamlessly with any of the other Apex systems, and then you just put one gear on the front, which I like to put like a 36 uh, gear on the front. And that's everything I need because I'm not really concerned about keeping cadence at 90 or 95 or 88. I don't need these like little perfect shifting zones on my bicycle. I want something simplistic because I want to do bike tours and I want to know if things are going to work over time and they're not going to fail. And removing the front derailleur is just removing one extra piece of failure that could happen on my bike trip. And my 1x12 gear range that I'm using on my uh, Argon 18 has a higher gear range than the 2x8, which is 16 gears on the Motobacane. 
so it's perfect it's perfect i can climb anything with that 3653 in the back and i have enough gears on the low end where i'm not completely spinning out on a slight downhill but the only problems i have with it is it's carbon fiber i don't have the three connecting points on the front fork and i don't trust putting a lot of weight on the back but i am using head wheels a 36 spoke count which is very similar to what the moto bacane has I use a 36 spoke count specifically because 36 spokes can get you to about a 265 pound to a 275 pound load capacity. And being a guy that's 205 pounds, I want that extra security and safety to know a spoke's not going to break or a wheel's going to fold when I take some aggressive downhill uh, ride when I'm loaded down with my bike packing gear. Now, I also using the Redshift uh, seat post uh, to give me a little bit of extra, extra cushion. I'm using some all-purpose gravel tires. Uh, and then I'm using one of my favorite handlebars I've ever found, which is the Redshift handlebars. Uh, it's called the Kitchen Sink. Super wide, super comfortable for long rides. And on this Moto Bacane, I take it anywhere. I take it on the road. I take it on the dirt. I'll take it on a mountain bike course. Uh, it can really ride anything. Uh, it just doesn't have that extra versatility of the, um, the com you know, the components. Well, the bolts, it doesn't have the extra bolts that I would want to have that the Moto Bacane has. So these are all considerations I have when thinking about building a Grava bike. Because what do I want to build with a Grava bike? One, I want to make an American-made product. It's made in America. It's North, Central, South America. doesn't matter. That's strong, reliable, not super lightweight like carbon fiber, but I want it to be sturdy. And so really, you know, who are the competitors? And I hate saying competitors because really I can't compete with anybody. Like I can't mass manufacture. I haven't even found a really reliable bike producer yet. But... Surly does a good job, I think, with all-purpose, all-terrain bicycles. They really do. Um, uh, you know, steel frames, well-constructed, multiple connection points, and they sell a bike bag line within the company. That's, that's what Surly does. And uh, so really, our benchmark kind of is Surly. And that means, you know, we're in somewhere between the $2,000 to $3,500 range uh, because, like I said, components and wheels, if you want a quality, you're going to have to pay extra money to put that on the bike. You're not going to get a quality bicycle to do long-distance adventures on that I would trust for under $1,500. I really wouldn't trust it uh, because you need those components, uh, quality components that's gone through the quality control checks that you need to make sure it's not going to fail and it's going to be a reliable bicycle for at least 10 to 15,000 miles. The next step, the next thing I evaluated is really the unboxing, unboxing experience. Now, unboxing is something that people don't understand the cost involved with that. So we look at the lowest level of boxing or unboxing experience, and really you're going to go to Bikes Direct or Bikes Online. Now, it's functional. There's nothing wrong with what they do. The companies wrap their frame well. They pack it well. But it's really just a wrap bicycle in a frame, I mean in a box, uh, with another box with your parts in it. Uh, there's no real special unboxing experience. And the best person at unboxing in the bicycle industry, in my opinion, is Canyon. But there's a huge difference between what the cost is of a Canyon unboxing experience versus what some of these other online retailers do. What do I mean by that? If I wanted to go out as Grava Adventure Corporation and pay a firm to help me create the most amazing unboxing experience that a customer would ever receive, that is going to run me anywhere from $300,000 to $500,000 to get through that engineering process to build the perfect unboxing experience for the customer. As a new company, obviously, I don't have that kind of money. And uh, but it's an amazing feature Canyon has is their unboxing experience is unparalleled to anybody else on the market. And when you really unbox a Canyon bicycle, it's like opening a Christmas present. That's what it feels like. Almost like the same thing with the iPhone or, you know, your Garmin computer or your Wahoo computer. 
they have an unparalleled boxing, box, unboxing experience that separates them. But if you go back and look at somebody like I grew up with or came up with, which is Wahoo, Wahoo didn't always have that unboxing experience. It was basically just like in plastic cases, uh, the cheapest way possible because they were a new company. And that's just kind of what you got to do as a new company. You can't afford to be spending half a mil on an unboxing unboxing experience. And the other thing is, too, is you're really wasting your money unless you can get to like 10,000 bike sales. You really need like tens of thousands of bikes being sold to really justify spending that money on an unboxing experience. So as a product manager looking at a new product, we need to find a way to use, you know, decals or stickers and things on the boxes to try to improve the bare bones unboxing experience that already exists. But in the beginning, that's just what we got to do. So my takeaways from the comparison between the Moto Bacane as a product manager and between the Argon 18 is that the unboxing experience, even though I don't have a video of it, was slightly better with the Argon 18. It's a better quality bicycle. Um, the components are better on the Argon 18. So what, what I'm seeing as a product manager trying to build a bike my own is I need to find a reliable frame and a reliable components because when thinking about the business aspect of things, we were doing returns with a company that's selling a bike online can get very expensive, very, very expensive. And um, so with my Shimano Claris failing, a normal customer, I won't do this, but a normal customer will probably ask for a return to do a return. And that's going to cost bikes direct a lot of money because they're going to have to pay unless it's in their terms and conditions that they won't pay for you to ship it back, but they're going to have to pay for shipment back, uh, which, you know, could be a hundred dollars and then shipping a new bike, which is another like 50 to 60 to a hundred dollars. Who knows, depending on what region you're in, uh, according to where their warehouse is at and where they're shipping from. And so then that can get very expensive, uh, doing a return. So when you're selling bikes online, you really got to make sure that, that it's a solid bike that's not going to break and that it's easy to install. That's the next business aspect I have to talk about specifically is, is making it, doing a good enough job in the setup process where a normal person can just put the bike together and ride off, where it's really simple. Now, my experience with the Moto Bikane, it was it was not simple. The front derailleur needed to be adjusted. The rear derailleur needed to be adjusted. The mechanical uh, disc brakes needed lots of adjusting before I got those just right. Uh, setting up the handlebars was easy. Getting those aligned was easy. Getting the seat installed was easy. All those things were super easy. Getting the front wheel onto the bike, getting the rear wheel onto the bike, not a problem. But a normal person is not going to be able to handle uh, front and rear derailleur adjustments or even understanding what it means to clamp down on the brakes and having too much slack and how do you tighten mechanical brakes. So that's a learning lesson for me as a product manager with Grava if we, when, when or if we get the bicycles is that uh, whoever my bicycle mechanic is or whoever's packing the bicycles, the bicycles have to be dialed in exactly. So the customer really just has to align the handlebars, put the wheels on, get the seat adjusted, put on their pedals, and then they're gone. They're, they're not dealing with any of the complicated mechanical issues. So if you're a person who doesn't really like or doesn't know how to deal with front derailleurs or real, rear mechanical derailleurs, then getting a bicycle from like Bikes Direct uh, won't be really a great option. Because if you have any, like, if you buy a bicycle from a bike shop and there's an issue, well, you just take it back to the bike shop. So if you're an inexperienced cyclist, it, you're, it's way better deal to get your bicycle from a bike shop, even if you're going to pay a little bit more because they guarantee their work. They guarantee their product. And if you have a failure, the bike shop will deal with the returns process for you. You don't have to deal with it. That's what you're paying for at a bike shop. When you buy a bicycle online, if you have any issues, you have to deal with that yourself. A bike shop is not going to be there to help you because one, you didn't provide them any business. There's no incentive for them to really help you out because they're not getting business from you. You're taking the bike online bike stores are taking business away from them. And uh, so if you're kind of like an amateur cyclist, uh, 
unless you know the product, which Grava will be one of those products that an amateur cyclist can't unbox and set up and go out the door with, you're really better off going to a bike shop or at least going to Dick's Sporting Goods or to, I hate to say it, Walmart. Because at least if you don't like the bike and it sucks and it falls apart, you can take it back to the physical store and get your money back. That's all I'm saying. But bike shops are always better. I would always go to a bike shop first uh, because they are the experts. They can help you out uh, if you don't know what you're looking for. Um, so that's my experience. So that's a different look at the differences between a $600 bike and a $4,500 bicycle. It's not a fair comparison, but you know, as a product manager, it's a pretty good comparison because I get to see the low end and the mid to high range end of a bicycle, how they're delivered, how they're packed, how they're set up, and how they hold out over time when it comes to quality. And of course, the more you pay, the better the quality is. So I think Grava bicycles will probably sit between that $2,000 to $3,500 range. Uh, we actually get to building our pretty much all terrain, all purpose, all use bicycles. And then we'll look at other options too with uh, working with small bike manufacturers uh, in the Americas or maybe, you know, or in, even in North America because there is a cost that comes with uh, customer support, right? And uh, could Grava provide this level of uh, support to a small bike builder in North America where we do all the customer interviews for bike fit, we do all the processes for uh, the, the builder just has to build the frame and fork and we assemble, we ship, we provide the warranty and uh, deal with all the customer support issues on the back end where a bike builder uh, can just focus on building bikes. So other things that I have to think of too, like where we're sourcing these parts and equipment, like everything has to be sourced. So as a product manager thinking about sourcing solutions, where am I gonna, where am I gonna source my seeds? Where am I gonna source my seat stem? where the handlebars come from, which area of assembly should this part of the bike occur, how do we ship it out. Uh, product manager really has their feet. They got to be spread across the line of the cons of where the consumer's at and what the consumer market looks like and the internals of making a profit and keeping the business, business running and providing quality. And um, so as you've seen here, I'm kind of, evaluating the market and then there's this also this internal look about what's profitable what kind of prices can we get for parts um, because the supply chain can screw you just as much as any bike builder could uh, let's say i find a bike builder that's doing a fantastic job maybe they can produce 500 bicycles a year but if uh, the, the company i'm using to get the handlebars uh is running out of handlebars, then I can't send bikes out. Or if I can't get seats, or if I can't get the components, the shifting components. Uh, I love SRAM, so I'll probably use SRAM, but like, let's say SRAM has an inventory issue. Uh, that's gonna delay my ability to send out things. So that's something I kind of struggle with is a bit, is having enough money to build up an inventory so when somebody purchases a bike, they get it right away, versus <clears throat> something that a company called SICK bicycles did which went out of business is they did a prepaid process and then had trouble delivering on the guarantees that they promised their customers like okay you prepay us we'll get you a bike in eight weeks but then it was going beyond that and beyond that and then customers will get pissed off if you're holding their money for that long so it's really this this fine line we're trying to navigate here at grava with getting into bicycles because you could wreck your company if you get too aggressive and there's too much demand for your product, it can actually be very bad <laughs> for you. Uh, but yeah, that's it. Sorry if this kind of rambled on a bit. I'll try to make the video a bit interesting uh, by sliding in some pictures and maybe some videos and things like that. But wish us the best of luck and follow uh, follow Grava Adventure Corporation at gograva.com. Don't forget to get a hat buy a t-shirt. Please help support us. Uh, we're not covering our overhead costs yet. Uh, you know, it's the way it is. The first 12 months are the hardest. Uh, but any little bit of support we can get, uh, buy a bicycle bag. We're getting more in from Columbia uh, every week. And uh, thanks again, everybody, for listening and watching. That's the inside view of a product manager in the cycling industry. 
I didn't cover everything because I don't want to bore you to death with all the number crunchings and margins and finance and stuff. Uh, but that's kind of generally what I look at as a product manager if I want to launch a new product in the in the fitness market and uh, generally speaking. So take care, everybody. Bye.